Pandit Dr. Nagraj Rao Havaldar is a leading vocalist of the Kirana Gharana. He is a disciple of Pandit Madhav Gudi, himself a prime disciple of the Kirana maestro Pandit Bhim Sen Joshi. Dr. Havaldar is also a disciple of Pandit Panchakshari Swami Matigatti, a senior disciple of Pandit Malikarjun Mansur, from whom he has imbibed the distinctive niceties of the Jaipur Atrauli Gharana. He also holds with distinction the Sangeeta Ratna, a degree in Hindustani classical music from the Karnataka University, Dharwad. Dr. Havadar has also been honored with several awards, most recently being honored with the Karnataka Kalashri Award from the Karnataka State Sangeeta Nirtya Academy Annual Award for the year 2018-19. He is also a very prolific writer, having authored several books and contributed articles to various leading Kannada papers and weekly magazines. Among his major works, Indian Classical Music in Changing Times in Kannada, published by the Kannada University Hampi, and Swara Sanidhi, a collection of articles. However, his magnum opus is his recent semi-biographical Bharat Ratna Pandit Bhim Sen Joshi, The Voice of the People. Now with this introduction, Panditji, Please tell us about your recently authored book on Bharat Ratna Pandit Bhim Sen Joshi. What in your view does this book represent? I have been a student of history and archaeology and Indian classical music for the last 40 years. So what I have noticed is there is a great need for documenting our great artists for the posterity. Normally what happens, the common man either knows the glorious side of a musician or the flip side of a musician. Here is a honest effort to document the human side of the musician, his struggle to become what he was at the end of his career and all that is documented in this book. Dr. Havaldar, given your near lifelong observation of Pandit Bhim Sen Joshi in the pursuit of your own learning, at what moment did you decide to write down your perception of Panditji's music and life? When Panditji was conferred Bharatratna, our Sunad Art Foundation, we celebrated that event with a music festival in Bangalore. We had invited Pandit Madhavagudi, my Guruji and several other artists. Also in the process, we did an audiovisual documentary on Pandit Bhim Sen Joshi, wherein we had the privilege of interviewing a lot of people like Dr. Raju Taranath, Sadar Shiv Garud, Anand Nag, just to name a few. So in the process, I thought that just being a documentary, it should also come in the form of book because the content and the information and the historical importance of all the information I had at my disposal was very, very essential to be brought in the form of the book. That's what inspired me to bring it in the form of a book. I noticed from the vast number of interesting anecdotes and recollections in the book, it must have been quite a lot of effort to even research into the life of such a great musician. If you don't mind, please elaborate on any preparations you had to make to even begin to write them down. Well, my immediate source to Panditji was my Guru Pandit Madhavagudi, who learned from Pandit Bhim Sen Joshi for 28 long years and the true Gurukula system. So he gave me a lot of insights into his life, his music, his riyas, his personality. Apart from that, I also interviewed Panditji's family members, his contemporary musicians, his supporters like Narahari Kulkarni in Mumbai, Satish Pai in Pune. So like that, I amalgamated all the information. It took me a long, long time. And of course, I have met Pandit Bhim Singh Joshi umpteen number of times. Uh, he was very keen that uh, I should resign from my All India Radio job and take a full plunge into music. He was the one who inspired me, instigated me, compelled me to do that. So therefore, I had a lot of personal rapport with him. All these things put together, I had a lot of information at my disposal and went over them again and again and at the end of it I brought it in the form of a book. So we have just heard about your personal rapport with both Pandit Bhim Sen Joshi and your own Guruji Madhav Gurdi along with many other luminaries. If you don't mind elaborating and sharing with us a couple of interesting anecdotes from your experience. I have been listening to Pandit Ji from my early childhood. In fact one of the famous compositions he sang for a Kannada movie Sandhya Raga Nambi Dinna Nada Devati, based on Rakhpuriya Kalan, left an indelible impact on my heart and soul. So, but when I met Panditji in person uh, way back in 1984 in Kolkata, 
I expressed my desire to learn from him directly by the time I had already completed Sangeet Ratna. So he asked me to sing for him right there sitting in front of me. So I had invited a tabla player by name Devashish Sarka. So we both sat together and I presented Raag Darbari. Pim Singh Joshi sitting in front of me. It was a great experience. It was a shivering experience. So Panditji asked me at the end of the rendition, uh, were you a little nervous, Nagaraj? I said, yes, Panditji, I was a little nervous. Then he asked me, what was the use by being nervous? Did it help you to sing better? I said, no, Panditji. Do one thing, have another cup of tea. Now, you become one with the Raga. Don't worry who is sitting in front of you. Do not be conscious of who is sitting in front of you. Your music is a conversation between you and the Raga and let others listen and enjoy that. So with this mental makeup you sing, he said. So I again sang the same Raag Darbari in front of him. It was reasonably better. So he said, this is your true potential. You have all the ability and the potential to learn. But be yourself. Do not be conscious of anything. So that's the first lesson he gave me. To be one with the Raga and sing for yourself and let others enjoy. This is a humongous effort that you put in just to acquire information, let alone organize them into a book. There are also a lot of your own thoughts on music intertwined into the pages, such as your analysis of Pandaji's music and recitals, your expression of Araga's development of a relationship with its practitioner, etc. Could you please share with us a sample of your thought workflow? Well, in this book, Pandit Bhimsen Joshi becomes a symbol for me through which I have discussed quite a few things which are related to our classical music in general, uh, like uh, the Gurukula system, the contemporary elements of Gurukula system, or the single-minded pursuit of the student towards music, though it was not a very lucrative profession those days. And what is the relation between the Raga and the artist? Is it just a scale? Is it just Tayari? Is it just Riyaz and speed and things like that? Uh, what I inferred after listening to Panditji was, like when you start learning a Raga, maybe Bhaira Varyaman is a Sampoorn Raga. It holds your hand and takes you around like a parent takes his child. So you will not discard since the child falls here and there. So if you continue to learn the same Raga for a few more years uh, with the help of the Guru's guidance, that Raga will become your school friend where you have much more freedom with the Raga and the interaction and the singing. If you still pursue learning and practicing that Raga for a few more years, maybe a few more decades, where you share a lot more things uh, with the life partner than what you share with your friend. Then if you pursue that raga for a few more years, maybe till you are 60 or 65 or 70, probably you have a chance of becoming the parent of the raga. So that's the kind of strong, profound relation that you develop with the raga with a prolonged pursuit. So these kind of things I've dealt in this book. Dr. Havaldar, I gather the book is not just a rosy hagiography of Pandit Bhim Saint Joshi. You have also delicately dealt with Panditji's very human weaknesses and how he gallantly dealt with them. Please shed some light on those aspects. Yeah, normally what happens when you achieve the status of a celebrity, your uh, audience, your followers would impose all the superhuman qualities on you and they expect you to live in a particular way, expect you to behave in a particular way, so on and so forth. But any artist off the stage is as human as anybody else. He has all the human desires like you and me and anybody else. And one serious problem that Pandit had to encounter with was his, his stress with uh, alcoholism. Uh, a lot of people even concluded that he cannot sing unless he consumed alcohol. But honestly, I have seen Pandit Ji from the closest quarter many times. So basically, not just Pandit Ji, any artist, our great art, be it music or painting or literature, that in itself is a great inspiring thing. It's a great stimulant in itself. So you don't need any other external agency to stimulate you to perform better. So to arrive at the conclusion that Panditji could sing well only after consuming alcohol is a myth. On the contrary, if alcohol can produce great musicians, all the wine tasters in the world would be great musicians. So he, coming from a very, very humble, traditional Madhva background, he came out of it very strongly. He fell into the trap, but he made a strong effort to come out of it and the music won, not the wine or the alcohol. His music was more inspiring, more intoxicating than anything else. Between the writing of the Kannada book and the writing of the English book, has anything changed in your perception of the content of the book, especially while addressing a wider audience? 
in fact it took me more than 4 or 5 years to come to the english version of the book prior to that i had spent 3 years in preparing the kannada book itself so therefore several things which were very very specific to kannada audience kannada readers have been left out in this book in turn i have added lot more things in this book which will reach a wider audience including few things like footnotes the historical references as it's a habit with a student of history to give the footnotes the reference and everything which will make a non kannada or a non indian reader more uh, comfortable with the whole book reading including the technical terms of uh, music the rag tal riyaz time theory so on and so forth so there's a lot of difference between the kannada version and the english version dr havaldar what are your expectations from publication of this book how would you like the book to be received and benefited by the people see do pandit bhim singh ji was one of the all time great musicians that the entire world has seen apart from being just a musician there are so many other qualities that can inspire and it can be admired by one and all like honesty he was very honest in fact he once went to a concert and somebody asked him to sing a particular raga and he made a confession that well i have not learned this raga properly i am not going to sing this and he made a public announcement and he also made a promise that if i came to this very concert next year i will come prepared to sing that raga so incidentally he was invited for that concert and he sang that rag jog with proper talim with proper riyaz and proper preparation so honesty is all about it and converting all the adversities into opportunity or how to handle the crisis the time management the dedication the focus all these qualities can be admired and imbibed by anybody not just a musician so he becomes a symbol through which i have discussed all these things all these qualities which are required for anybody to be successful in the life music is one form and one medium for him that's my expectation it could be read by a student a software engineer a professor a student of music anybody everybody would benefit from this book dr havaldar i was wondering if you could speak about the book's reception so far uh, i am very thankful to uh, bhim sen and savai gandharva sangeet mahotsav in pune 2018 they allowed me to release the book in pune that was the place where it really belonged to uh, the reception was very nice and uh, i also had a release function in kolkata thanks to my friends tar maestro parthav bose and his wife aisha and that was well received too with a lecture demonstration and pandit ji's gaiki and all the things i made there again uh, we moved on to chennai uh, where uh, vishwakala sangam mr v rao and sitar maestro uh, janardhan and carnatic musician unni krishnan and uh, carnatic and hindustani music and scholar Lakshmi Sri Ram helped me to do a release function there in Chennai also the reception has been good the people are um, responding to me and i would like to spread the word all around about this book so that more and more people can benefit out of this a lot of my friends followers disciples admirers and supporters in the USA they have already um, taken quite a few copies and they are reading it and circulating it and there is a very very good response there they want me to send more and more copies their children are getting inspired so so i'm very happy about that also dr havaldar it was truly great getting to learn about this book and for for readers that are interested in purchasing this book uh the book is available uh in person from the author himself as well as on amazon <laughs>